We really felt like she was coming into that race better than she ever had. And we know on number standpoint that she fit. We never got a bump. We never got a push. Gabriel found her the perfect trip through there. She did everything just like the princess uh, was supposed to do. A great morning to get up. It just was a bad, bad night to go to bed. So she was down on the ground, not sure uh, what happened. Eight bells, the filly ran her heart out. She was second. And here is the equine ambulance pulling up next to eight bells. Father, we thank you for the uh, cold, crisp morning. We pray your hand of protection will be upon us, upon our horses, and upon all the horses that train today. Be with those that are working down at Fair Hill and those in Middletown. Father, we pray that your name would be glorified and we would continue to do your will. Help us to be a blessing to others. In your name we pray. Amen. Uh, All right, guys, let's go. Let me check where you're going. Training track. I never studied under another trainer. I never had a set of assistant license ever. I had worked around horses my entire life. My, uh, my mother's father worked and farmed with horses. Uh, my dad, we had cattle operations, so we worked with horses all the time. So the horse part came second nature to me. I just saw that, you know, it, it wasn't all that difficult, and farming was bad. You know, at that time, in the early 80s, it was just, it was hard to make a go at farming. So I decided it might be a good opportunity to try, and uh, I figured I'd give it three or four years, and if it didn't work, I'd go back to the family farm and uh, work myself maybe back in. I was uh, my only Gallup boy when I started. Then my, my wife now became my second Gallup person back in, uh, I guess that was in 1985. But yeah, I've, I've always uh, managed to Gallup as many as I could, and uh, it's just, that's part of it. Uh, you know, that's what got me into this, uh, was I love to ride, and that's probably when I'll quit training. When I get to where I can't ride, I'll probably quit. I have found that if you'll just kind of become part of that horse, and don't be snatching around on them and jerking around on them and just go ahead and set chili and become one with the horse. I found the weight really does not hurt them. This is a stud colt. They don't normally do this. I don't think this is quite a rags to riches situation in terms of eight bells. What do you make of the decision? Eight bells going to the Derby, proud spell staying here in the Oaks. Well, if they had any doubt in their mind, if they made the right decision, I, I guarantee you with the conditions they're seeing out there today, owner Rick Porter and trainer Larry Jones are both, you know, even happier now that they chose to run in the Derby instead of the Oaks. It, the track's got to be a lot better tomorrow. What's this weekend been like for you so far? Big, big weekend for you having a horse in the Oaks and Derby. Well, it really is. And, you know, we, we realize we've got a chance to make a little history, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Hopefully we're up for the challenge. We felt like we had the two best fillies in the nation going in, and that was the reason we didn't run uh, eight bells in the, in the Oaks. Rick Porter asked me uh, if I had any objections to running her in the Derby, and uh, I couldn't come up with any, any 
real reason. And he told me, he said, Larry, he said, I think you're going to win the Oaks with or without eight bells. Uh, so uh, he let me run Proud Spell there and gave me the opportunity to try to win both races. B Sharp Sonata confronted by Proud Spell on the outside. B Sharp Sonata digs in gaily. Proud Spell pushing on by. And she's taking the lead now. Country Star far outside. And on the inside is Little Bell in deep strength, but it's Proud Spell. And she's kicked away from the field impressively. Proud Spell drawing away to romp home in Kentucky Oaks, number 134 by five. Larry, seeing the outcome of this race and the ease with which Proud Spell pulled this off, how does this make you feel about your chances with eight bells tomorrow? Well, I mean, it gives us a lot of confidence, and uh, we feel like these fillies are very equal, and so if she performs that way tomorrow, it, it may be good enough to get the job done. She was doing so well. She had been relaxed all day long and had handled all the uh, hoopla of all the people and the excitement around the derby up to that point very well. And she walked over with such a calm demeanor. We had tried to convince her that at least half the people for the derby that day, all the women were there to see her. And that's uh, kind of the attitude she went over with. She was very poised, was perfect in the saddling paddock. You couldn't have asked for a horse to have been better. Now what we had to hope for was that we would get a good trip uh, and that she wouldn't get intimidated by uh, a lot of the boys because it was probably the first group of horses she'd ever been with that was as large physically as she was. And it's going to be Big Brown bombing home to a convincing win in the run for the roses. It is Big Brown by five on the wire. The Philly eight balls was second. Who went down? Did, it, did you see? The most awful thing I've ever seen in horse racing just now. What was that? Philly eight bell, she broke both front legs. After the wire? After the wire, for galloping out. That's the worst thing I've seen 18 years I've been riding. It's awful, sad, very sad. I, I was already walking around the track. Uh, There's so many people at Churchill, we couldn't get back to the onto the racetrack. And as I happened, I'd caught up with Steve Asmussen walking down through there, and my wife and uh, him, and I was talking as we went out onto the track. And the horses had been unsaddled walking back around. Now, I had watched her gallop out, start out around the turn, and, uh, and so we were hurrying, trying to get back down to unsaddle her. But I never knew that she had fallen. I, I never knew anything. And at the first signal that I had anything was wrong is when I saw my jockey coming back on an NBC, uh, uh, one of their broadcasters' horse. Uh, he was riding back with, uh, with Donna Brothers. And, uh, and I knew that wasn't right. And, uh, and, but she had already uh, been euthanized. By the time I knew anything, she had already been using her. Galloping out, uh, she was down on the ground, not sure uh, what happened. As uh, two actually equine ambulances pulled alongside eight bells. I can't tell you that eight bells jockey got up and walked away. It obviously was very concerned. A sad moment here as uh, the others celebrate the derby for eight bells and her connections time. It was no warning. Basically, she stumbled. She actually broke her ankle when it knuckled over on her. And then she broke the cannon bone on the other leg trying to catch herself. And you still go try to see about the horse, and the very first thing I did was go catch that ambulance, the second ambulance, and had them take me to where she was and let me examine myself to make sure that in my own mind that the right decisions had been made. But as soon as I uh, saw her and got to examine her legs myself, uh, they made the only call they can make, and, and they did keep her from suffering, and, and I, for that I was very grateful. But then within five minutes, by the time I could get back to the barn, it's just uh, you were hounded like, uh, well, how do you feel about that? Well, how was you supposed to feel about that? How would you feel if your child run across the street chasing a loose ball and gets hit by a car? Uh, there's unfortunate things all the time. Uh, you can't feel lower. I mean, it just, uh, it just, somebody rips your heart out. You know, as I told, you know, she had strings tied to my heart. I mean, just because she, she was who she was, I was around her every day and I galloped her most of the days, uh, the last couple of months preceding the race. And, uh, and those strings were attached pretty good. And when she died, it just jerked a piece of that heart out and she still has it. Uh, it'll always be hers. There'll always be a hole in there that uh, belonged to her. And, uh, but we're, we're going to survive, we're going to go on, and, uh, and the, the game is, is trying to make improvements because of her. You know, she didn't die in vain. There's a lot of things that are being done. 
The game was a good game when she ran, and it's going to be a better game after this has happened. You have to go on. You can't sit and, and sit on the couch forever. You can't go to bed and, and cover your head up and just uh, never get back out of bed. Uh, you have to go, and uh, and it's just uh, I, I know it will all will be okay. The only thing I can say it was meant to be, and I don't know why, but I, I do know. The good Lord has a plan for all things, and uh, it was a plan, and, uh, and I just happened to have to be a part of it. Our Sam!